Good evening, everybody, and welcome back to another installment of Scott's Tennis Selections here on Sunday, May 19th. I'm aware that I haven't been able to make a video on tennis in the last couple of days, but there weren't that many matches I saw value on. I did recommend Nadal. I know that the minus one and a half sets did not work out, but he did win the two sets that he uh, won in the match, 6-0, 6-1. Covered the spread. It ended up going over as Djokovic won the second set, 6-4. But Nadal, the king of clay, is officially back, and he will definitely go into Roland Garros with a little pep in his step as he will try to win another record-breaking uh, championship in Roland Garros. But there are a couple of tennis tournaments starting tomorrow, specifically in Geneva and Lyon. And we will be covering one match in particular that we think provides a lot of value. We'll be providing you with some leans on some other matches. The match that we're going to be looking at is between Steven Diaz as he takes on Bernard Tomic, as they are taking that match is taking place at roughly 6:20 a.m. Steven Diaz is an unranked player. Uh, he's currently ranked in the ATP about 262 where Bernard Tomic is ranked 82nd. So at first glance, you might think that Tomic should be favored in this match. However, he is not. Diaz, it opened up at minus 110, so it was even on both sides. He had money's poured in on Diaz, who's currently up to minus 125 on Bookmaker and even higher in other spots here. Tomic is a very solid server, but he is an awful clay court player as he has lost four, he has lost four of his last five clay court matches with the one win coming up against Balzarani, and Balzarani is ranked 492nd in the ATP. Meanwhile, Diaz had to qualify here very impressively as he won in three sets against Papyron and Hallis. If you don't know who any of those two people are, they are both very big serving tall guys. So pretty much exactly what Tomic likes to do, Diaz has, was able to beat similar type of players in the first two rounds of qualifying in Lyon, and he will be taking on Tomic in this match. We like, to, we like Diaz on the money line here. We think that the fact that Tomic is ranked significantly higher and that money's poured in on Diaz makes a lot of sense. It makes us believe that Diaz is the right side here. Diaz, as people might assume, is a clay court specialist, and Tomic is definitely inferior on clay in comparison to other uh, courts, uh, other types of services like hard court as well as grass. So our play of the day will be on Steven Diaz money line in Lyon. That should match should be taking place at roughly six twenty. But minus 125 in the line we will be using is available right now at Bookmaker. So that is the line we will be using. Uh, moving on, we will be talking about some leans here in the ATP. Uh, specifically, looking at just briefly looking at the card here, I do like the over two and a half sets between Delian and Seppi. Seppi has actually lost seven straight matches on clay. So I think Delian will be able to get the win as well. But uh, in terms of this level of competition, Seppi just went three sets against uh, Batista Agut, who's a very solid player. And Seppi, even though he is struggling currently on the clay, he's still a solid clay court player overall. Delian had some success in Germany as he ended up losing in one of the later rounds to Travaglia in three sets. I expect that to be a very close match. I think that will go three sets, but I would personally lean to Delian to get the job done there, but I would lean to the over in that match. I also see a decent amount of value on Yannick Sinner, who is the up-and-coming Italian. He is currently 17 years old, and he will probably be a top 25 player within the next year or two, as he is part of the next generation of ATP tennis players from the men's side. But in terms of this match, that match will be taking place roughly 6-20. Kukushkin has lost five straight matches on clay and five straight matches overall, and Sinner has actually qualified for this match beat Hoang in three sets, and even beat uh, LeMason in straight sets here. Uh, he also had some success in Rome as he ended up beating Steve Johnson, the American, in the first round of that match. Kakushin has lost in straight sets in each of those five matches that he's been in. The competition has been pretty you know, tense, so I can understand that. But overall, for me, I would personally lean to Yannick uh, Sinner here. I think there is value there, roughly plus 104. He opened up at roughly plus... 125 down to plus 104 in most spots. So money's come in on him. I think it makes sense. Kakushkin does not look great on clay so far in the last month or so. So I would personally lean to Sinner in that match as well. Uh, moving on, briefly looking at the card, I would lean to the over as well in the Charity versus Herbert match. Herbert has been struggling lately, but these two have played each other and they're both in France. They have played previously last year in the French Open. That went to five sets. They played a while back earlier on on clay. That went to three sets as well. Chardy, with the exception of getting destroyed by Nadal in his last match, has actually been pretty solid on clay. 
but Herbert is also good on clay, and both these will be in front of the home crowd. I expect him to put on a show, and I think that will go over as well. But the play of the day, as I said before, will be on the matchup between Steven Diaz as he takes on Bernard Tomic, and we like Diaz here at minus 125 on the money line, which is available at Bookmaker. Other than that, that's going to do it for this installment of Scott's Tennis Selections here for Sunday, May 19th. And good luck to all of you and your respective bets.